What's up YouTube? It's Thrift Hunter here with this week's garage sale and estate sale finds. This is some of the stuff I've been picking up over the last couple of weeks. Uh, trying out my camera, testing out a whole bunch of stuff again. Uh, I'm a little bit different of a setup today, so hopefully it works out. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, picked up some jewelry. This is the stuff I got. Um, didn't spend a whole lot. Um, I did probably spend maybe $200, $250 on everything uh, which I think is a good deal um, and I'll talk about some of the things that I bought got my new uh, power zoom hooked up and I've been kinda of playing around with it already but just seeing how the autofocus is working and how the audio sounds again I'm trying to work on the audio to see if we can get it any better but um, got some silver stuff, uh, some other jewelry, a knife, a uh, watch. Um, I've got more than this to show you as well. I've got another couple of watches and a whole other box of stuff that um, I may do in a separate video. So we're going to start out with this stuff. I'm going to play around with my camera a little bit. And we'll kind of go through what I found this week. So still working on the camera here, but let's check out some more jewelry. We've got... Some nice sterling salt and pepper shakers here. I got this cool uh, St. Patrick medal, 1975. Uh, just a silver coin. Nice little uh, one ounce coin. Got that for 15. And on the little manual, it says right on there. So how did I know that it was silver? says right there 999 fine silver so I knew that that was uh, an ounce it also says that it's an ounce this one troy ounce of 999 fine silver and limited edition whatever but not a bad pickup still buying silver um, ounces and stuff when I can find them if they're at a good price if they're around melt or if they're below melt even better I'll take them so I've been picking up some stuff like this just to go into the stack. So there's the back of the coin. Uh, pretty cool little silver one ounce coin that I picked up. Just really putting my autofocus and lighting to the test here. See if it, it captures the detail pretty well. I would say like the autofocus is pretty fast. So far, still getting used to it. At the same sale as the uh, St. Patrick's medal, I got these two coins. Um, it was also marked $15. Uh, just by looking at them, the color, I figured, yeah, those are probably silver. Uh, without knowing at all, like, you know, what percentage or anything. And people are like, well, how do you know if that's a good buy or not? And I'm like, eh, they're coins, they're heavy, they're probably silver. You know, I think for 15 bucks, that's a pretty pretty good bet if they are silver. And I looked them up, they are silver. They are these um, Olympic uh, coins from Mexico, I guess like yeah, 25 peso coin. This one's pretty, uh, pretty beat up there, but... Uh, these bring about ten dollars a piece. I don't think I'm not gonna make a fortune off of them, but I do like them. They got the cool design on the the edge of the coin. Uh, I do like uh, finding coins. If I like I said, if I can get them for a good deal, I'm gonna buy them all the time as long as it's around spot under spot for coins because coins bring a premium. Uh, either way, uh, these do have a date on them. Let's see, you guys probably saw it already. 1968 uh, so I was able to find those researched them really quick um, it was a pretty good deal look at these little earrings that I picked up uh, I saw these at an estate sale where the jewelry was pretty overpriced and there really wasn't that much good stuff at all anyway but I saw these and these were in the ten dollar um, section of the case and you know, I think right away you should notice that the design is um, 
pretty decent. Like, you know, it's probably a designer piece, right? Like, you don't just see um, big silver earrings that look like this all the time. And flip them over, and they're clip earrings. And they're pretty heavy. And then you can see that they're they're signed. As soon as my autofocus comes in. So I looked this up. It's like um, Jean de Close or something like that. Um, and it says on wax in the center and 925. Because these were probably, I guess, electroformed in wax or something like that. Um, but pretty cool pair of sterling earrings. Uh, I think for those, um, I looked up some of the comparables. It wasn't a um, super expensive item. Uh, I think anywhere from 30 to maybe like 75, 100 if I'm like really stretching. But um, some pretty cool silver earrings there, I think. Bought this watch. Uh, it's obviously pretty beat up. It's kind of broken, um, but it's got a nice design. You can tell right away. You should see this and be like, "Oh, that's gold filled." Like, that's what I thought um, when I saw it. And I can't tell who the maker is of the watch. I still can't see it. So we're gonna open it up and take a look inside um, and see what kind of watch it watch it is. Um, I suspect. It's a 17 jewel, just like generic um, movement, but it's got some uh, engraving on there. And then just right there, it says nine carat. You can see it's like kind of rub nine carat. So the little top piece is nine carat um, and it's broken. But uh, the watch, when you look at some of the edges, um, so if you can see kind of on the, the top edge here and the top edge there that there's like a little bit of a, uh, you can tell that the plating is worn off because this is gold filled. Uh, it's a much thicker plating than gold, but around the corners and stuff, you can see, hopefully, hopefully my camera's picking that up. It looks like it is on the little screen here. Just that little color difference makes me think that it's um, gold filled. So I'm going to show you my new uh, watch opening kit that I bought. Um, Amazon, like 20 bucks. Wanted to see if I liked it, if it was worth it. Um, we'll uh, use some of the parts to open this up because I couldn't get it open earlier. Alright, so this is the little watch kit that I bought, and it comes with some pretty cool little tools. Um, just going to review this a little bit, and we're going to try and get this watch open. Um, it comes with one of these, which is for opening uh, case backs, which are like, um, you know, screw back uh, watches that have the water seals on them, and uh, a lot of them have these special backings. So you use one of these tools to uh, unscrew them. So far, I hate this tool, this one right here. Uh, I love all the other tools, hate this, because it's just loose, and the tips that they give you are, are kind of crap, and they could be, um, you know, they just could be a different material. I don't know. Don't like it, and it's very, like, the, there's a lot of play in just how the just how the the fitting the nib in there fits even when you screw it all the way down so they screw in there's still just this wobbles around too much for me so it's been making me scratch watches and uh, make it a pain to open them but it does come with this tool here um, this little poker thing if I can get it out So it comes with this little poker tool, and I do like this. I've used it a couple of times so far. Anyway, for $20, uh, it's come in handy. I use this. You can set the watch in here and kind of clamp it down uh, when you're working on it. The little hammer, I don't know. I haven't really used that, but it's kind of neat. Um, 
bunch of precision screwdrivers, even the little, little tiny one. Um, very cool to have that. Uh, my favorite tool in the whole kit is this tool right here. And this is just the the case watch back opener tool, like one of the actual ones for the uh, flip top ones like these that just break apart. They're not screwed down and they're not um, like pressure fit or anything. Uh, but this one's like the plastic's a lot thicker. It's heavy. It's well made. This little um, thing here, this little spade or whatever, has come in handy uh, a bunch of times already. So this is what we're gonna use to open our watch. So I'm gonna grab our watch here, and I haven't opened this before at all, and haven't even attempted this but we're gonna try and see so good news and bad news with this watch um, I got I took the little plastic uh, kind of crystal or whatever off of the watch and um, underneath the dial looks like it's in pretty much mint condition there Let's see but the name of the watch it says craftsman which I thought was kinda cool um, the face is pretty much in mint condition it's beautiful um, unfortunately I still cannot get the case open I tried pretty hard and I can't get it open but there's the I tried to pull out the um, the stem there to um, see if that would make any difference for getting off the case because sometimes they they lock the uh, case from being separated and like all this like dirt kind of came flying out of there i don't know if you can see see how it's all black like all the way around there yeah i don't know what's up with that and i don't know if i'm just trying to open this watch wrong or something but um the face looks super nice so um, actually i like it a lot better with the um without that um plastic over the top of it yellowed plastic um, that was cracked and broken, but look at how much better that watch, like, even if you see an old watch that's broken, not working, and it looks like that, and you're like, uh, and then sometimes you pull the little plastic off, and it's, like, brand new again, so, um, pretty cool one there. Here's another watch that I bought, um, just, like, three, three to five dollars, um, just a you know vintage watch movement not running I pay a couple bucks for those um, you never know uh, when someone wants to restore one or whatever like you can get this cleaned up or you can pull the parts off of it um, so I'm always p uh, picking up those because uh, people who repair watches know that you can never get enough of random little pieces uh, I bought these for a dollar I believe some cool little uh, moonstone earrings and I'm not sure how well it's picking up the little color play on it but I um, saw those just flashing in the in the bag of jewelry and uh, I like moonstone uh, I like it when it's bigger like this not like usually you see little tiny pieces um, Swarovski Jaguar pin uh, don't buy these that often but when you pick them up for a dollar or two always get to pick those up there's like another little Swarovski thing I kind of just whatever um, faux turquoise bracelet uh, this thing's pretty cool so just a kind of neat really old uh, ring it's like broken and beat up but I I don't know, it was like a dollar or something, so I bought it anyway. Um, this is the coins that I've been getting from Coin Roll Hunting uh, recently, since my last video where I showed some coins. Uh, nothing special, it's a couple of silver dimes, and like one or two silver nickels, and some just older date nickels, and some wheat pennies. Super, super crusty. I don't really mind buying stuff that's, you know, really, you know, rusted out like this. Uh, this is a Buren, uh, it's a, it's, I believe, let's see, oh, it's the Buren Grand Prix. 
So usually when I see like the, the name of the maker and then below that like a model number or something or like the model name, uh, that's usually a good sign that it's a better watch. Um, plus it has the, has an engraving. I hate these stretch bands. Ugh. Look at that, some of it broke off. Look at that, look how crusty this stuff is. Anyway, I'll clean it up a little bit. Got that nice engraving on the back. Serial number, it's got that, like I said, that case, you need the case opener to uh, open one of these. Um, I need one that's just better than the one I have. But, um, yeah, like one of those links snapped off. I'm just gonna rip this band off here in a minute anyway. Yeah, that's just breaking apart, okay. We're done. All right, so I changed some of the audio settings and hopefully now you don't hear just literally everything in the room. Hopefully the, the audio just got a lot clearer because I just changed the uh, audio settings on the camera to make the filter go up so that it cuts out some of the noise. And uh, we'll see how this is working now. Um, but I picked up this uh, knife and I had to pay a lot for it and I probably paid too much. Um, but it was at a sale with a whole bunch of military stuff, and it had a bunch of other knives. Um, this for sure was probably the best knife in the whole group. Um, so at this sale, like I just really wanted to get the best thing that they had and leave. And I got those um, couple of coins from this sale where I got this knife. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. So it is a... Vietnam era uh, fighting knife and the reason why I think that is because right there on the back it says uh, United States Navy Vietnam campaign so I'm guessing if this is the um, the right sheath, sheath with this knife I think it is um, just by the looks of it I think it's probably the right one um, this helps date it so that's pretty uh, cool I think it's um it's not marked at all so there are no um, markings on the blade and so makes me think it's probably made by K bar and or Ontario or like you know one of the Camillus whatever one of those makers made this um, most likely K bar I think from my research um, a lot of the other ones were marked but the reason why I bought it um, was I think the condition of the blade is actually really really good um, I have bought and sold knives like I mean for almost 10 years now so um, I know what collectors want in knives is really good condition and I thought that this knife was in pretty good condition it's not 100% but um, what I'm looking at is the bluing on the blade so it's got the original uh, bluing all the way through with only, um, you know, a little bit of wear on the top side here, a little bit towards the point, um, which is to be expected since it probably had some light use. Um, the There's no chips in the blade, and I can see that it hasn't been reground, shortened. Uh, the point is still really nice and sharp. Um, the top is very nice, so um, I paid a lot of money for it. Uh, you guys probably already saw, but... Um, that says a hundred on it. I did not pay a hundred. Uh, I paid seventy-five, which is probably way, way too much for this knife. Um, you can find lots of examples of this knife for like maybe forty, fifty bucks um, in this kind of condition. But I thought this one was a little bit uh, better than most, so I uh, picked that up. Gonna hold on to it for now. Definitely easy, easy, easy item to sell. So uh, that's the knife that I bought. All right, let's go over what we've got in this little basket here. Um, I did some more adjusting to the audio, so hopefully now I've got it pretty perfect. Uh, I'm going to go over the stuff I bought in here. This was from a sale a couple of weeks ago, and I went to it the first day, and I bought some stuff. That's where you saw some of the, um, the knives and whatever, and they had all these metals, and I didn't go... I went and I didn't think that the prices were right on the metals. Um, I saw a couple that looked interesting, but I didn't want to pay what they were asking for them, and you'll see. Um, so I went to another one of their sales like the next week, and they had brought the same stuff from the old sale to this sale, and a lot of the metals didn't sell. 
And I was like on my lunch break or whatever, so I didn't have a lot of time. So I was just like quick, like I want to go check out these medals and see if they still have them. Um, so I went there and I talked to them. And they're like, oh, yeah, we remember you from the last sale. I'm like, yeah, I see you have a lot of the same stuff from the last sale. And she was like, yeah, we have a lot of stuff from, from the last sale. Um, I'll go half off since a lot of the stuff didn't sell. Um, the, the old stuff she would go half off on. And I was like, okay, so that's cool. So that's pretty much what I went there for. So I bought a bunch of the medals, even half off really didn't get that great of a deal. Uh, the medals turn out to not be worth that much, but, um, we'll go ahead and show you, uh, what we've got in here. Um, we'll start out with this one. here and we're gonna power zoom on in there one of the things that's next on my list um, of camera gear is gonna be a hundred percent gonna be a nice tripod uh, the tripod I have right now I bought it at a garage sale for a couple of bucks and uh, it's just terrible so um, that will be coming soon uh, so this metal, um, let's see, this is a, it's the seal of Connecticut right there. Um, it's got a name on it. Uh, that name is on a couple of the items that I bought. Um, <clears throat> you can see the price tag there, $30. So I ended up paying, uh, $15 for that one. Not a super rare metal. Um, we'll show you what the, the other side looks like. There you go, and it says 1914-1919. Uh, this is like a World War One medal. A lot of these are uh, either World War One, World War Two, or uh, Spanish-American War. And then I've got the stuff from Vietnam as well. So obviously something, either some kind of a military family or something. So uh, that was one of the medals there. There's two of these uh, the Knights of Pythias. <laughs> Uh, little medals. Here's the other one over here. So they wanted 50 bucks for this one, and I think uh, this one was like 25 or something. So I got them for half off, 25 and um, 1250. So uh, I thought that was a good deal. Turns out these are pretty common. Um, this one is marked silver on the bottom there. So. They're like, this one's silver, so we want more for it. And I'm like, eh. Like, I was thinking maybe this was gold-filled and silver. That would have been nice. But anyway, you look these up, and, you know, if I get 40 bucks, 50 bucks for both of them, like, that, I mean, that's probably pushing it for those. So those are probably the worst deal uh, out of the metals. Uh, here is one that is... Uh, the American Legion uh, pin saying that they were uh, delegates uh, at the 17th uh, Department Convention in Hollywood. And it says the date um, looks like August 12, 1936. Uh, so I saw that and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, they wanted 30 bucks for that one. No markings on it. Um, I don't believe it's silver. But it is, I, I saw a couple of other ones um, that were maybe just the top part or, or were a different convention and um, not a lot of them that have this Hollywood thing. I don't know, paid 15 bucks for it. Again, another one that was like, ah, I think it's like 20, 30 bucks maybe at most. Um, here's one of the Spanish-American War veterans uh, brooches or uh, little pins. Again, not super rare, but um, decent. I mean, they, the prices on these are anywhere from like 30 to 50 bucks. Um, so you can find some that go for cheaper, but I think this is a nice one. It's got uh, um, a whole bunch of stuff here with the original ribbon, and it does have a little bit of a marking on the back. Uh, I, d I don't think it's silver again. I think it's just like a white metal. Uh, but this one is, let's see. Yeah, Spanish-American War, so that one was neat. Uh, here's one of the the better ones here. I think this is probably the best. 
out of the metals. So hopefully you can see that. Hear that loud and that creaky uh, tripod. So this is um, just commemorating the centennial of uh, George Washington's inauguration. I thought that was pretty cool. I knew like George Washington and, and this being from like the 1900s was like a pretty good deal. Um, for the $40 they're asking for it, so I paid $20. Uh, there's the other side there. Hopefully it'll focus in there. So it's got a really nice detail. It's a nice um, metal. Um, I looked this one up and one sold for $67. So um, for $20, bucks, if, it's, if I can get $67 or um, around there, then that was a good deal. Um, so there's that one. Got another one here. It says 76. I believe this was another um, Spanish American wa uh, War uh, veterans pin, if I remember correctly. Um, so that one's pretty cool. It's not marked on the back. Like people were thinking, oh, maybe it's gold or something. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not gold. And then there's that uh, Lieutenant HD uh, Bissell uh, on there again. So I think I got one more uh, pin. Uh, this is uh, World War I. Uh, another like veterans pin uh, for the state of Connecticut uh, for service. Uh, I really like the detail on this particular um, metal. I really like this design. I'm pretty sure this design I've seen before. I don't know if it's on Connecticut seal or um, or what, but I've seen this design before. I know it's by a famous designer. Um, I don't think this is like the original, um, you know, the design on this is not original. It's pulled from somewhere else. Um, but I really like the detail on, on it, so there's that one. Uh, here is a big silver pin that I got for a dollar. It's marked um, 925 right there in the middle. Uh, nice heavy one, kind of mid-century, I guess. Um, here is a watch that I bought. And... This watch was probably the best deal, so I was buying all of the metals, which cost, like, I think the metals and this watch was, like, 150 bucks or 155 bucks, something like that. And I just said, oh, you know, this one's beat up because, um, I'll show you that it, hopefully, um, my focus will pick it up. I think it's on this side. Yeah. This side's got a little bit of a chunk missing out of it. And it's, um... That's a little beat up, but uh, overall, not too bad, and it is a 25 joule automatic, so I was like, okay, 25 joule automatic, um, definitely worth the um, the price tag. Also, the, um, let me move the hour marker, so, or the minute marker, hopefully you can see the name on it. It's by uh, Boucherer, uh which is a pretty well-known company very make a lot of stuff out of gold make a lot of high-end stuff um, been in business for a really long time so I got this for 30 bucks it runs smooth it's been running fine for a couple days now and uh, I like the black dial and I like the uh, that the band kind of matches I'm not a fan of stretchy bands at all um, but really nice watch needs some work needs to be either recased or, or just cleaned up really well. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that one. I'll probably end up selling it. I saw a couple will sell for like around a hundred bucks. Um, some more, some less. So I thought that was a pretty good pickup. Probably the best deal. Probably a better deal than all of the, um, all the medals. I could have just bought the watch and probably end the, uh, maybe the George Washington one and would have done better. Um, here's like a little, um, just silver, Danecraft sterling. Um, I bought this. Let me zoom out a little bit. Bought this basket. 
Um, I looked at it. I thought, man, maybe, maybe it was silver. Um, I was being pretty hopeful just because I thought I saw the quality. If you, I don't know if other people see this, but like, it just looks like there's a lot of detail here in the way it's wrapped, and it it basically looks handmade. Um, and I turned it over, and it does have a mark on the bottom, uh, which is just some numbers and then whatever. But right there is a tiny, 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 tiny mark. And I could not, at the time, I could not read what that mark said at all. So I got it home, got it under a loop, um, and really looked at it. And I saw that it says uh, Christoffel, um, which makes silver-plated things. So I found out that it didn't say Sterling. I was hoping for that. Um, but Christoffel makes some pretty high-end stuff. Uh that really, they use a really heavy silver plating, and a lot of it's handmade and whatever. Um, so I saw some com completed listings for baskets pretty similar to this for like a hundred and seventy-five dollars, two hundred dollars. Like, there's, I don't think there's any. Uh, to me, I don't think this is worth two hundred dollars. Um, I, I don't know why some of them have sold for that much. Um, some of them are like little wine bottle holders and there's a couple that have gone for like 40 or 50 bucks But then there's some of these baskets that have brought a lot of money um, It's a nice basket. I think it's very decorative and like very like you can use this for anything, but uh, Is it gonna bring over a hundred dollars? I I don't think so, but maybe I mean I could be hopeful and And maybe I'm just completely off and it's super rare, but um, pretty cool little basket there um, I'm going to run through a couple, just a little bit more here, because I'm almost done. I've got a little pearl necklace. It's a very short uh, length, but nice silver um, clasp. Let's see if we'll focus. There it goes. A uh, little silver clasp. Um, Small, uh, cultured pearls. The pearls aren't even very nice. Um, saw this ring. This was a dollar. Very nice. Um, little silver and onyx ring. Uh, and then also another big silver ring for like a dollar. Um, big sterling Mexico uh, ring there. And uh, I got some other silver stuff. Um, little silver bracelet with uh, some knots or whatever that's pretty heavy uh, one of these big uh, uh, Omega whatever necklaces one of these big silver um, necklaces mark 925 uh, really big heavy tax coast or uh, yeah I believe it's tax go let's see See how well it'll do on a marking. You see that? Will it autofocus? So there's the little silver mark on that one, I'm just testing out how well this picks up, like, little markings and stuff. I know you can see it, but I just don't know how well. Um, big, heavy sterling piece there. One more sterling bracelet with kind of a ribbed design to it. So um, that was some more silver stuff that I got really cheap. Um, and what else? Uh, just quickly some uh, little silver onyx pin, silver Mexico uh, thimble, some silver earrings, a little silver chain, you know, just kind of the usual stuff. Um, so that was some cool finds there. And that should be pretty much everything except this uh, gold necklace. So uh, this was at one of the sales uh, that was pretty cheap that I went to on my lunch break. And uh, they didn't have a lot of stuff. It was more of like a moving sale, trying to sell the house kind of thing. And they just had like a couple of bags of costume jewelry, um, which is where I got this. I, I guess I didn't cover that, but that's Trafari um, bracelet that I just kind of bought for whatever. 
but I saw this one and it is marked 10 carat. Very, 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 very small on the class, marked 10 carat. And uh, it's really dirty, uh, but you can see it's got a nice design. Um, and there is like a, a regular chain underneath that. So I uh, picked that up for like five bucks and didn't think that it was worth that much because it feels really light. Uh, but it's actually over 11 grams. It's like 11.4 grams, which is like around 200 bucks in scrap. Uh, so that was probably the best find this week. I like that watch. And then I've got some more stuff that I'm going to show you later. Um, that's pretty nice that I bought. Some of it I'm keeping and whatever. But um, this piece is it's very dull and very dirty. And people all the time are telling me like, oh, your gold's fake because uh, gold doesn't doesn't uh, tarnish and you look at this piece and this was in a whole bag full of junk and it's super dull and brown and like just just doesn't look like gold because it's so dirty um, so gold that's like lower carat um, 10 carat 14 carat can tarnish and oils on it and if it sits for a long enough time these things can turn completely black so the people that say that gold doesn't tarnish 24 karat gold does not tarnish this is like only 30 percent gold and the rest of its other metals so um it can still tarnish and get really dirty and people miss that those are the ones that people miss are the ones that aren't super shiny so um usually when i see really shiny gold that means it's usually plated and if you see it and it's kind of dull and a little bit softer then it's actually uh could be real gold you know assuming that it's marked so if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you guys like the new audio quality. I hope you guys like the new setup. Um, still continuing to work on it, but thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I got some more coming up um, probably tomorrow, so check me out uh, then. Have a good one.